Good afternoon. Thank you for watching our live update for Thursday, April 15th. Today, I have our COVID update and a couple other items uh, to share. Then uh, our Vice President of Development, Gail Hagland, has a foundation update for you. After Gail, Glendon Kemp from Security has a couple topics, and then Vanessa Perry has our pastoral care segment today. Um, so start out just with a COVID update. Last weekend, we learned of a new employee case of COVID-19. Uh, this case is a CNA, uh, certified nursing assistant, who works in our thir Parsons Health Center third floor. Um, this nursing assistant had received her first dose of the vaccine and was awaiting her second dose when she tested positive as part of our routine weekly staff testing. Um, she was and remains asymptomatic uh, while she's at home in quarantine. Um, and also this week, we learned that a dining employee tested positive. Um, now, due to the uh, certified nursing assistant from third floor testing positive, visitation has been suspended on the Parsons Health Center third floor south and east halls. Um, and these two halls will remain in quarantine until Saturday, April 24th. Um, and that's in uh, partnership with Virginia Department of Health. They've given us guidance on how we need to quarantine and which halls and for how long. Um, compassionate visits uh, will uh, continue in those areas. So uh, if, um, if you need to see your family member um, and they live on either three south or three east, please uh, be in touch with our healthcare administrator, our, our nurse, the, the third floor nurse manager or your social worker, and we'll see about getting an appointment set up for you uh, if possible. Third, all of our Parsons Health Center residents um, were tested uh, this week after learning of this new case. Um, and, and thankfully, every resident in Parsons Health Center has come back negative. And so that's a great, um, a great result. Also, I meant to say I forgot, um, everyone who resides on third floor um, east and south who might have had contact with uh, this staff member who tested positive, they've all been fully vaccinated. So um, while there certainly is a little risk, um, that gives us some comfort too to know that everybody on that floor is protected uh, with the vaccine. So that's really good news. Um, we do continue to test all of our healthcare employees weekly right now due to the positivity rate in the Henrico Richmond area remaining over 5%. I think we're at 6.6% .6 or thereabouts today. So um, we will continue to test weekly uh, for a while, uh, probably. Um, the two employees who most recently tested positive are both in quarantine at home and will return to work uh, sometime next week if they remain symptom free, uh, which is good news. Um, visitation throughout the rest of Parsons Health Center uh, and the rest of the community remains open. Uh, so we're really thankful for that. And lastly, uh, as it relates to that uh, COVID situation, this Friday we are hosting a vaccination clinic uh, where uh, approximately 50 new residents, employees, contractors, and volunteers will get their uh, second dose of the vaccine. And so you might see that on Friday in the Cochrane Commons. It is another uh, vaccine clinic. Um, so if you, see, if you see that clinic going on, you'll know what it is. Um, we do remain in very close contact, daily contact, in fact, with the Div Virginia Department of Health as we make decisions about how to reopen our campus, handle visitation, and uh, when any, we ha whenever we have these positive uh, cases uh, in our employees or God forbid we, if we have another resident who might test positive. So um, we are, like I said, we're, we're, we communicate, our team communicates with Virginia Department of Health every single day and, and we, we've, we appreciate their uh, partnership with us. Now, a couple other topics. Uh, our facilities team wants you to know, especially the residents of the tower, um, that Renovating, we will be moving forward with renovating the remaining tower laundry rooms beginning next Monday, April 19th. Um, the recently renovated laundry rooms are available and will remain available for your use during the renovation period. The work on the remaining floors will take about six weeks to complete um, and we'll provide you with progress updates along the way as we complete this renovation. 
The team will be setting up a table near the lounge on your floor if you're one of the affected floors um, where we'll put out any unclaimed items from those laundry rooms. So if you, um, if you can get your stuff out of the laundry rooms before Monday, we appreciate it. If anything that's left, we'll put it on a common table uh, for you to pick up uh, before they get in there and move, remove the existing laundry um, machines and the existing cabinetry will all get pulled out uh, next week. So if you have any questions or concerns, please contact Tom Henning at extension 6033. Uh, he'll answer your questions, and if you have any questions about the new machines, uh, he's the guy to go to as well. They, they are going to be putting some additional uh, educational material out on how to use those machines and uh, finishing up a couple of other items. I wanted to also give you a little more information as it relates to the Vibrancy Project. I really uh, very much appreciate all the feedback and questions we've re received. Um, in response to the video that we shared uh, earlier this month. Uh, it's real helpful. If you missed it or you want to see it again, you can watch it on TV 970 daily at 4 p.m. It's on TV 971. It features a narrated tour of the projects. Um, as I said last week, I want to begin today to address some of the frequently asked questions uh, that we that we get, and it's uh, a large group of us get, from, the, from you uh, throughout the week. And, and so we've put together a frequently asked questions. And, and each time we get together in a live update, I'll, I'll try to address a couple of the questions. Today, I have a couple I want to answer. And so some of you have asked uh, over the course of the last year, um, why is it called Vibrancy? Where did that name come, come from? And why do we call this project uh, Vibrancy? So here at Westminster Canterbury Richmond, um, we have a vision for everyone who lives here to live a vibrant life uh, throughout your elderhood. To us, a vibrant life means living life to the absolute fullest. It means thriving in an active, in an active setting. It's our vision to partner with you uh, and all current and future residents to realize your best life possible, offering you the places, offering you the services and programs that creates a dynamic, energetic, and caring community. Vibrancy, we found as we talk through things, that, for, that term describes our aspiration, and it comprises the next changes and enhancements coming to this community. And so as we talk through it, that's where that name came from, and it, uh, it best describes what we aspire uh, for our community. Second question, many of you have asked, what does vibrancy accomplish for this community? Um, once vibrancy is completed, Westminster Canterbury, Richmond, will benefit from a best-in-class vital living center um, with really best-in-quality, highest-quality fitness and aquatic spaces, wonderful new dining venues and social spaces, creates a parking deck that is a parking solution for the whole campus, really a place for all staff and visitors to park, which frees up all of our lots for our residents and their guests. It improves our outdoor recreation and social spaces, and it allows for approximately 100 new residents uh, to join this community. So we often hear, um, how was the vibrancy plan determined? Where did, who created it? Where did it come from? So back in 2016, a strategic planning group, really a, a, a dual board strategic planning group made up of corporate trustees, foundation trustees, resident uh, association leadership and executive staff studied over the course of a couple of years uh, the organizational strategic needs and master planning needs and strategic growth requirements and the gr group over those year, year and a half, discerned the best path, po best path forward based on research uh, that we um, had help with, um, some detailed financial projections as, as to how a project like this would benefit the organization, um, local and regional market studies to tell us about the competition uh, and the, the future, futuristic views of our industry, and then we had the help of uh, proposed architectural and engineering plans to, 
to solve some of the, the more challenging questions as it relates to growth. And we balanced all that with the strategic goals that are in our strategic plan and uh, the mission and vision of Westminster Canterbury Richmond. The planning group determined um, which program spaces and resident amenities were either in need or would be in need of replacement or what program spaces and facilities were really not up to the Westminster Canterbury standard, which is a very high standard uh, for senior living. And then took the time to focus on reimagining those spaces in ways that will best serve you, your neighbors, um, and everyone here who uses all these spaces all the time. The planning group, a strategic planning group, was dedicated to assuring that the plans that were created would benefit current residents um, and really uh, the feedback that we get from the staff who work with you every day is really what's helped inform uh, the designs of these spaces. It'll help prepare the community for the future residents um, because we do want to remain the top CCRC in Virginia for many years to come. Um, and lastly, uh, meet that goal, exactly that goal, that we uh, ensure that Westminster Canterbury remain the best choice for seniors in Virginia if they're looking for uh, uh, the best place to live. And so that's, that's um, what it accomplishes. And lastly, um, a couple of you have asked, who are our project partners and how did we choose them? Um, the Westminster Canterbury team uh, that's involved in this is the executive staff, um, Tom Henning, our director of construction management, facilities management, Derek Oliver, um, plus uh, a broad collection of leaders and managers and program staff from all of the affected areas, uh, recreation, um, uh, um, resident services, uh, wellness, um, security, IT, uh, across the board. Really every department has had um, the front, front desk and, and concierge team have had a big part to play in it. And so that's the team uh, and now we have task, there's 13 task forces made up of staff and so lots of individuals are participating now that we begin to think about how the project um, gets uh, introduced and, and managed through, throughout the, the construction period. Um, but then we also have project partners, the, the, the consultants and, and professionals that are part of our team. And the first, um, you've met Melissa Pritchard in the, in the narrated tour. Melissa Pritchard is the managing principal in charge of our project from SFCS. SFCS is a Roanoke-based architecture and design firm specializing in continuing care retirement communities. Uh, this is essentially all they do. Um, they have a little bit of work in other forms of senior living, but 90% of all their work is in continuing care retirement communities, and they're very, very highly regarded in our business. Um, our construction partners, um, the, the teams that will help build this, uh, it's, a, it's a unique partnership. Um, it's a joint venture between Gilbane Construction. Gilbane did the, the Spiritual Center, you will recall. They're a national leader in construction. Uh, and, and then a, a more local uh, firm. Henderson Construction is a family-owned William base, Williamsburg-based company um, that has done a number of projects uh, throughout Central Virginia. And so Gilbane and Henderson did a joint venture and they're gonna partner on this project. And really that brings a lot of different talent and skills and connections uh, to this campus. Our owner's representative and the project management team that'll be, that is helping our team uh, manage this project is JLL. Uh, JLL is Jones, Lang, and LaSalle. Uh, the team that we're working with is a Richmond-based project management firm. I, Bryant Wilson has, has been on campus a number of times. He's our, our leader, and you'll see him soon uh, at one of these live briefings. Um, and then our marketing and sales team is supported by Love & Company, a senior living marketing firm uh, that we use. We use them for all of our um, uh, marketing support, Stacy and her team uh, know them well, and, and Love and & Company is a very highly regarded firm in our, in our industry. And the last partners that I'd introduce to you is HG Design Studios. HG Design Studios is a Richmond-based landscape architecture, uh, landscape architecture and civil engineering firm 
and, and they round out our team. And they also um, are well known. Uh, they do a lot of work in the county of Henrico and in the city and are very familiar to, with the city and county's uh, requirements as it relates to uh, all the landscape and civil engineering requirements. That's been very helpful. Um, so those are, those are the first questions. In the coming weeks, I'll continue to address other questions, maybe a little more detailed questions uh, that you all have been sharing and, and that our team hears. And, and soon we will, like I said, I will bring the construction team leaders uh, here to a live update so you can meet them, put a face uh, to the name, uh, especially as we begin to um, mobilize for the promenade project and the parking deck projects, which will start over the next 60 days or so. Lastly, for me, uh, I want to share with you that April 18th through the 24th is Careers in Aging Week. Um, we celebrate and uh, appreciate our staff every single day. Um, but this is a special opportunity for us to highlight our field uh, and uh, the incredible, heroic, uh, and dedicated individuals who work in this field. Um, I want invite, to invite you to celebrate with us and, and make a special effort to tell an employee who you appreciate, tell them that you appreciate them over this next couple of weeks. Um, and, and I know that will, will mean a lot to this staff. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Gail Haglin. Uh, she's going to share an update uh, on one of the many ways um, that you support our employees here at Westminster Canterbury through the foundation. So I'll see you next Thursday. Gail's up next, uh, then Glenn, and then Vanessa. So have a good day. Good afternoon. I'm really thrilled to be able to talk with you today. I'm here to share some wonderful news with you, and it follows right along with what John was just talking about. As you may know, Westminster Canterbury's WEAVE program provides many advantages to our beloved workforce. The letters of WEAVE stand for workforce, education, assistance, volunteerism, and engagement. Many of our residents have demonstrated support of our workforce with financial gifts to this program and Approximately 140 of our employees support the program and therefore each other through payroll deduction. There are three residents who have made very generous gifts to start Weave Endowments. Those are permanent uh, funds of money that will always be there. And these endowment pledges and gifts now total more than $500,000. $500,000, that's awesome. We are very, very hopeful that people will continue to support this important effort. Your generous donations provide life-changing scholarships. They assist with financial emergencies when those strike our employees. They demonstrate appreciation and allow our teams to make a difference to seniors in need through volunteerism. So a big, big thank you to everyone who supports this program. And a word to our staff. Please know that many residents express their love and appreciation for you when they make their gifts. You are really appreciated. Overall, giving to Westminster Canterbury Foundation is quite strong this year, thanks to you. There are many programs here that are supported thanks to your generosity. In fact, our fellowship program has reached $908,000 toward our goal of $1.675 million for 2021. So thank you so much for all the ways this wonderful community demonstrates inspiring generosity. Thanks to each and every one of you. And next up is Glenn Kemp. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, John. I have three announcements for you today. As our residents know, one of the benefits of living in a place like Westminster Canterbury 
is that we have a daily wellness check-in process for residents. We are able to help ensure your safety and well-being through a motion sensor process that maintains your privacy and independence. The Tower Garden and Glebe have been using a new system away from the motion sensor system since January. Now those same changes are coming to the daily check-in process for the courtyard and for the courtyard apartments and the homes on the green. A contractor will be working with us to install devices to your front doors starting on Tuesday, April 20th. That's this upcoming Tuesday. We will begin work on the fifth floor of the courtyard and work our way down and end the homes on the green. We expect the installation process to take less than two weeks. The devices serve as the new daily check-in system. The new process works as follows. You will need to open your door once between the hours of 4 a.m. and noon. If you do not, you will receive an automated check-in call, which can be programmed to go to your cell phone if you so desire, from Sarah. If you do not answer, our central station officer will attempt to contact you by phone. If we are unable to contact you this way, we will send a security team member to your apartment to check on you. This is our best solution to ensure your safety while maintaining your privacy and independence for the time being until we find another solution. A quick public service announcement. The weather has been beautiful with the exception of a little rain last night. And we love seeing so many of you spending time outside enjoying it. For your safety, please stay on walking paths and avoid roadways as much as possible. Lastly, I wanna talk about a scam alert. I so greatly appreciate those of you who call and report scams to me. I wanna to bring to your attention a new and particularly malicious scam call. This particular call will come from a number that mirrors a Westminster Canterbury number. For example, the caller ID number might show 804 200 1126. To make matters worse, it will have the resident's name on the caller ID. When you answer, the caller will, will announce him or herself for major or well-known companies such as Microsoft or Amazon and use a bullying tone to try and get you to make a payment for something that you haven't paid for. Please stay vigilant against these calls, hang up immediately, and by no means should you ever give out personal information or financial information over the phone. If you are ever in doubt whether a call is a legitimate call or a scam call, please call me at extension 6079. Thank you very much, and up next is Vanessa Perry. Good afternoon, everyone. A couple of uh, announcements today. Uh, many of you came to the sanctuary this morning to hear Gary Jones' lead worship service, and many of you were trying to watch on TV 970. Uh, we are aware that there were technical difficulties with the sound and video during the service. Um, so please know that a team of technicians is aware uh, of the issues and are working diligently to get them corrected. It's not easy um, as simply flipping a switch, but please hang in there with us and we will work out the sound and video for our new space. A sermon for every Sunday will air on TV 970 this Sunday at 4 p.m. Reverend Philip Martin, who's the pastor of Epiphany Lutheran Church, will be preaching from Luke 24, verses 36 to 48. On Monday, the pastoral care um, department, along with the cultural arts department, will present the movie Soul, as part of our Movie with a Message series. The movie will start at 2 p.m. right here in the theater and is scheduled to last one hour, 47 minutes. 
Tickets will be available at the center and tower desk tomorrow morning, um, starting 10 a.m. So once you get your ticket, please remember to bring your ticket with you to the theater on Monday. Our next Music in the Sanctuary will be Tuesday, April the 20th, starting 11 a.m. in the Sanctuary. Resident musician Sally Maynard will play both sacred and secular songs. We have a few spaces left, so please sign up by calling David Curtis at extension 5179. Please consider being, becoming a part of our small group discussions on race and racial reconciliation. Sessions will start the week of May the 3rd, lasting approximately six weeks. For more details and to sign up for one of these sessions, please call me at extension 1502, um, and please call by Wednesday, April the 28th. Some of our staff are observing Ramadan this week um, and the next couple of weeks. So I ask that you wish them a blessed Ramadan when you greet them. I will end with this traditional prayer. O oh Lord and sustainer, please forgive me and be merciful to me. You are the best amongst those who show mercy. Amen. Our next update will be Thursday, April 23rd at 3 p.m. So please enjoy the rest of the week and your weekend. Thank you.